social media is one of the best tools that we have right now to be able to promote and make money. For one year straight, I didn't buy nothing. I didn't buy a new pair of drawers, new pair of shoes, nothing. Sacrifice come before success, even in the dictionary. There is no reason why somebody should start a business and not know how to do it the right way with all of this knowledge out here. Yeah. It, it taught me very early on that you really have to be careful who you do business with. I know the quickest way for you to increase your visibility and make more money. All you gotta do is it has to work or it has to work. Welcome to Circle of Greatness. I'm your host, Nehemiah Davis, and today we got somebody special, man. I'm talking about serial entrepreneur, restaurant, restaurant tour, <laughs> salon suite owner, owns a, has a foundation, giving back to the community, has a brand, all around crushing it. Snoop. What's up? Hey, thanks for having me, Neil. Hey, thank you for being on here. Hey, Appreciate you are the you. ultimate hustler. <laughs> nah, that's you, man. No, no, that's you <laughs> are the ultimate. We talking about ESCO. We talking about, I don't see you stop promoting. And, and I, I love what you're doing. I want you to talk to it. Why do entrepreneurs need to promote more? There's so many entrepreneurs like that they're not winning because I'm like, yo, you're not promoting. Like they worrying yeah, about how I, their page got to look. Man, you're I You're going to promote that. every day. Exactly. I'm going to promote every day. Every talk about single it. day, you know. And I tell people all the time, that's what Instagram is for. That's what yeah. social media is for. Yeah. You know, I'm not on here to, you know, of course, you know, to, to get the followers, you know, that's good. And, you know, so I'm strategic with it. I'm not going to have, you know, five flyers in a row. You know, I'm going to post a picture of myself yeah. in there and, you know, do a quote or whatnot. But, you know, I have a lot of things going on. And social media is one of the best tools that we have right now to be able to promote and make money. You know what I'm saying? And so it's just like, why not take advantage of that? Yeah, 100%. People be too worried about okay well if i post a flyer it's only gonna get 15 views hey man how'd you like they still looking at it 100 percent. listen <laughs> I, I i be telling people this uh i got this from my guy runway say yo your grind gotta be annoying and i would mm -hmm. be like i sat down with grant cardone and we know close to a billionaire or whatever and he's like every time we post or every assume they did not see it mm-hmm mm-hmm like they gotta keep seeing your stuff mm -hmm. like because it may take that many times for them to finally say most people don't buy it the first first time they see Esco, that don't mean they may be going there. First time they see something I got going on, I don't mean they need to keep seeing it over yeah, I've and learned over. That people and at least have to again. see something three times yeah. before, you know, you really have like that brand recognition yep. or, you know, that recognition for somebody to, you know, want to make a move or just for it to catch their eye. And then, you know, so a lot of us, you know, we're on Instagram making money. So we're on Instagram every day, but a yeah. lot of people are not on Instagram every yeah. single day. 100%. You know, I be telling people this. I be like, yo, I go look at their pages. I go look at what they got going on. And I be like. I know the quickest way for you to increase your visibility and make more money. Like, the, all mm -hmm. you gotta do is post more. Yep. I literally go look at somebody last 30 days, I'm like, yo, you got two posts up. That's crazy. And you complaining <laughs> about businesses wild. slow, you complaining about, in these times we're in right now, I'm learning, you gotta work a little bit harder, right? You do. You it do. ain't as sweet as it was. Man, you, I'm working my ass off right now. You, you know, know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, me but too. you know what, sometimes it's good to, you know, 100%. get back and, you know, get your, get your hands yeah, dirty. Get in that you know mold. what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Can't ever get comfortable out here. Yeah, never. Yeah. And I, I remember at a time I was getting comfortable. My homegirl was like, yo, you chilling. You too comfortable. Mm -hmm. I snapped right back out of it okay. and got right back to it. All right. Yeah. So how long have you been an entrepreneur? Man, I've been an entrepreneur. How you start? So I graduated from high school when I was 16. Went to college when I was 16. Graduated college oh, at so 20. Smart, smart. <laughs> Um, and I started doing financial advising when I first graduated from school. And so what, that, what school you went to? I went to Vanderbilt okay. in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. So Vanderbilt was a top 20 university in academics and top 20 in partying. Okay. <laughs> Playboy magazine actually listed it as that the year that I went to it. So, um, you know, I got my bachelor's of science in economics and I got a, a PhD in networking, yeah. <laughs> you know, while going to Vanderbilt. But uh the probably the only job I ever had was being a financial advisor. And so that really gave me a good foundation of, you know, investing, um, insurance, you know, financial planning. But, you know, that was a position in which, you know, I was basically an independent contractor for American Express Financial Advisors, which turned into a mayor prize. And so I pretty much was on my own, you know what I mean? Hustling, you know, getting clients. I was extremely successful at it. 
And uh, I ended up meeting a guy that's still a mentor to me today, and he got me into investing in real estate. So is that where Salon like, Suites came from? Not yet, not okay. yet. Okay. <laughs> I don't even think people were even doing Salon okay. Suites at that time. Um, I just was investing in like rental properties and stuff like that. So at 22, I had six houses, including the house that I lived in. Five of them were rental properties, um, had a nice little portfolio. He had encouraged me to get my real estate license. So I was selling property, selling investment stuff. And um, this is back in 2008, right before 2008, 2009, you know, when we had one of those first economic crashes, you know, of our times. And uh, I ended up losing it all. Uh, at that point. So that's one thing about me, too. You know, I know that I can lose it and get it all back. And yeah. I think that that's, you know, very important, you know, in, in being an entrepreneur. But um, after that, I ended up doing a calendar uh, in Nashville. <laughs> it was called Wet Doms in the Key with a bunch of models there. Like Wet Doms in the Wet Key. Wet Doms in the Key, Tennessee. Okay. Key. Okay. <laughs> like I said, I got this PhD in partying and yeah. network in yeah. Vanderbilt. So <laughs> um, ended up doing that calendar. It was wildly successful. And in order to promote it, I needed the models, the girls that was in the calendar to, you know, host parties yeah. um, at restaurants and lounges and clubs. And so that kind of opened up my eyes to the hospitality industry. And that's what, uh, you know, really inspired me to want to be a lounge owner. Yeah, that's good. That's mm -hmm. good. When did you open your first lounge? So I opened up my first lounge when I was 24. Okay. So I invested everything I had. Um, you know, at that time, Where you get the money for it from from the financial planning. And I got the, the money the from the financial planning. Yeah. I had sold a, a house uh, for the guy that, that was my mentor. Yeah. Uh, so like he he had like a two million dollar house at the time. He really picked me to do it because he knew he could uh, decrease the rate. You know, he yeah. was paying a realtor because I was just so happy yeah. to be selling a two million dollar home but at that time at, at age 23, 24 that's years a, old. You know, a lot of house. Yeah. At 24, two million. Yeah, it yeah. is. It is. So, yeah. So so I invested in that calendar and then the, the rest of the money I invested in uh, my first lounge and I hooked up with some some people and uh, it, it taught me very early on that you really have to be careful who you do business with, you know, to make sure that you have your contracts and your paperwork in place. Because uh, they completely took advantage of me. We didn't open up everything the way that it was supposed to. So it was literally like grand opening, grand closing. Yeah. <laughs> the shit was closed down within 30 days. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So you I, put, I, I and lost you put everything. everything you had. I put in everything that. I had into it. Wow. Yeah. How did you recover? Because most people, and I want you to talk to people because somebody lose a thousand and oh, I quit or, yeah. or lose 500 or. Yeah hit a hit a hit a, a rough patch in their business and they quit you put everything you had mm -hmm. emptied your bank account to go open a full-fledged business mm -hmm. in 30 days down but that did not stop you from going what did, where did you get this one where did you get this all in mentality from mm -hmm. uh was you born with that did you grow to develop that mm -hmm. right and why didn't you quit after that? Yeah, I mean, I was definitely born with it. You know, as a kid, you know, we're so always in you and not on you. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's both of them. Yeah. You see it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm playing with you, man. But but yeah, um, you know, as a, as a as a kid, you know, we're always asked, like, you know, what do you want to do when you grow up? 100%. And so I always said that I was going to open up a bunch of businesses, that I would be a business owner. Um, I come from a family of hustlers on both sides. You know, my mom. Um, her dad was a very successful business owner, even just back in the 60s, you know what I mean, when it was much harder to do uh, than it is now. And then my, my dad's side of the family, you know, they were hustlers in the street. You know, my dad, he drove a Rolls Royce to high school. Mm. So um, this dad drove a Rolls Royce <laughs> to high school. Yeah, 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 yeah. I never they, heard of that. That's some big meats type of. I mean, you know, they they, they ran with BMF. You okay, know what I mean? Okay. So that that was the the line yeah, of business you know, that, that they were in. And so, um, you know, I, I definitely was born with it. And then, you know, I also had my daughter very young. You know, I got pregnant the first time I had sex at age 14. So I had her wow, at 15. first time. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, that's probably why I'm gay now. <laughs> but anyways, um, you know, I think just having a child young and knowing, you know, that you have somebody that, you know, that you have to feed, you know, that relies on you, mm -hmm. you know, having a family, um, if that don't instill you know, some type of hustle mentality or, um, you know, a uh, will for you to want to come at overcome adversity. I don't know what will, you know yeah. what I mean? So that's what it was for me. Yeah. Let me ask you this. If you're, you said that's maybe why I'm good. Did something happen for you at 14 when you had the baby? Were you like, yo, I, 
when you said that's why I'm gay now, what, what does that mean? Uh, but you, I, I'm just saying because I got pregnant the first okay, time right, I had okay, sex, okay, you all right, know. Okay, all right, I didn't know if it was. I'm okay. like, uh, uh-uh, uh, let yeah. me hold on. Yeah, <laughs> but that's correct. First time I'll be yeah, like, yeah, you know that. Whoa. What did your parents think? Were they like mad at you? So, you know, I actually kept it as a secret from my whole entire family because I was wow. very scared yeah. uh, to come out with it. So yeah. my family really didn't find out that I was pregnant with my daughter until I was seven months pregnant. Wow. I mean, you were skinny then. <laughs> you are so silly. No, you know, how, you know, yeah. some people have yeah. been, and they yes. don't be having no stomach. Yeah, yeah. I, I was very small. Yeah, that's what I mean. Not, yeah. no, not out. Yeah, like, noticeable. and it was yeah. basically it wasn't until I, yeah. I was about seven months that okay. you could kind of really yeah. tell, you know. And I was wearing baggy clothes. It's summertime. Yeah. I got on a hoodie. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's like, uh, uh-uh, uh, now what's going on? Yeah. You know. And so my mom, she was very upset because my mom had always raised me. Uh, my mom ended up being a single parent of us, you know, three kids, you know, raising us on, on her own. We moved from Detroit to Nashville for, for her. She wanted to get away from my dad's side of the family. She wanted my brothers to not grow up, you know, in that environment and in that atmosphere. And so my mom had always raised me and telling me that not to have kids young, you know, it'll ruin your life. You know, yep. it'll it'll slow you down. You won't be able to achieve your dreams, your goals, et cetera. Um, so, and that was one of the main reasons why I was so scared to tell her. Yeah, because she uh, kept so, pounding in your brain. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And, um, you know, they, they always say, never say never. Never mm. say what you won't do, you know, because I'd be like, you know, I, you know, I'll never do that. You know, I'll never do that. And I was always really smart, you know, so I knew I was going to go to a good college. Um, but anyway, so she ended up finding out when I was seven months pregnant. Of course, you know, like any parent was very upset, you yeah. know, very shocked. Um, very taken aback, and uh, she did not want me to keep my daughter. But at that at that point, you know, <laughs> um, abortion was not an option. Yeah. Um, you know, and she basically was wanting me to put my daughter up for adoption, and so me and her kind of fought over that for four years. And so my daughter was in foster care for the first four years of her life. Wow. Mm-hmm. Because. Yeah. I'm assuming you didn't have money at the time to be mm-hmm. able to provide for you. And then right. she said, and I'm I young, ain't going to provide what, I mean? I'm only what 15, I'm going to do. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? So, mm. yeah, I had no choice. You know, and that was one of the hardest things um, outside of, you know, eventually losing my daughter, you know, like I did. But, uh, you know, that was one of the hardest things just as a young mother, you know, having a baby and then having to turn them over. You know, my daughter was listed as BUFA when she was born, which means baby up for adoption. Wow. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, I see you doing a show. You might have to make a movie too. I mean, oh uh, yeah, you know, that's, I'm sure that's, that's coming. Definitely, <laughs> yeah, definitely. You yeah. know, I've, I've I've wanted to get into TV and film for a very long time, ever since I was a kid. Yeah. But you know, I ended up finding something that I was passionate about. You know, which has, um, you know, thank God, you know, blessed me with the finances to now, you know, get into you know some other things that I've always wanted to do. So this is just. You know, the snooping for love is just to be able to get my feet wet, you yeah. know, be able to give me some experience. Yeah. Uh, but eventually, you know, I do want to do a movie or documentary yeah. about my life for okay. sure. That'll be good. Mm-hmm. And just to give you, I was listening. Um, I was uh, just to share this with you. I mean, I'm, I don't I just did my first executive produce. My I first saw movie, that. Congratulations. Yeah. Did you, you so enjoy much. it? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll have to work on the next one. So I'll definitely let you know. So okay. we we'll get a few investors for sure. Um, so uh, I'll share. So I'm at this event and there's all these people there, a bunch of people going crazy online, movies, all. And they was just saying, I'm not a documentary watcher personally. Like mm-hmm. I don't, it's hard for me to say, I watch like the Mike documentary and all of that. Mm-hmm. I, I thoroughly enjoy a movie. Mm-hmm. And they said, you know, Blood Diamond, right? You ever heard, seen Blood Diamond? This sounds familiar. But it's a, it's a popular movie. You know, Pursuit of Happiness? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So Blood Diamond and Pursuit of Happiness, all that is is a is a documentary. Okay. So what they were saying, and you still choose like they say is much better, it'll probably go further when you turn it into a movie. Mm-hmm. Like if if I told you about I forgot the guy name in Blood uh Pursuit of Happiness that Will was playing. I mm-hmm. want to say Christopher or something. Yes, but yes, I know exactly. If somebody just said go watch this documentary, you never heard of him, you probably not That's gonna true. go turn. That's but true. when they say Will Smith playing this character. That's true. That's true. So if they was telling me about some something happening in Africa with diamonds, I probably wouldn't watch mm-hmm. it. But when they turned it into a full-fledged movie, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. if I think about my story, I thought about a docu too, but I'm like, yo, I want to turn it into a movie because I think 
we can appeal to more people than Absolutely. just someone who just. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I'm not a documentary watcher, so it's like, I watch it because you my people, but mm -hmm. I rather, I want to, I'm amazed with the story already. I'm trying <laughs> to see that in a movie format. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, for sure, for yeah, sure. So I, I was just saying, do you think you got this, because uh, you kept saying a lot of things as a kid, and I don't quite remember, as a kid, me, it was like NBA. Mm -hmm. It wasn't never really, I'm going to be a businessman, I'm going to do this, mm -hmm. I'm going to, do you believe you were saying those things because you were saying your father, like, yo, even though he was, he's doing business, but do you, or it was just um, in you? I don't think so. I think it was yeah. just in me, you know, mm. because by the time, you know, I got up some age, my father was, there, there, the family was no longer successful, mm. you know. My mom always said they went from sugar to shit, you know, which yeah. happens with, you know, a lot of drug dealing families, yeah. you know. So um, I think it was just something that was just really in me, you know. Yeah, that's good. So where we left off at, we went to your first lounge. What, what happened after the first lounge? How so, did you recover? Yeah, so so after the first lounge, uh, pretty much, you know, I really didn't know what I was going to do. I ended up getting a, a little sales job and working at, you know, for a very short period of time. And while working at sales job, we were on a, a work trip. Um, in a little small city, Chattanooga, Tennessee. And we were going into a, a gas station and there was a little newspaper on the gas station and the gas station called Just Busted. And it had pictures of people that had been arrested that week. So it was like a guilty pleasure, a little weekly tabloid, yeah. you know, that was coming out, that, that came out each week. And uh, the guys that I was with, they was like, hey, you know, we should do this. You know, we could do this back in Nashville. And so, I didn't pay it a whole lot of mind. You know, I purchased one of them, took it back to my hotel room, was kind of flipping through it before I went to sleep. And um, all night, I just really couldn't get it, get it out of my mind. And I always tell people, you know, if you got an idea or something that, you know, you're passionate about and, and it's like you keep thinking about it, you keep thinking about it. And it might be something, you know, that, you know, you can turn into, yeah. you know, a fruitful idea. And so. Um, so anyways, you know, I ended up hitting them up the next day. We decided we were going to go back home and, you know, try to get this newspaper off the ground. Um, you know, I was kind of doing a little bit of hustling myself, so I was able to get up a little bit of money. And uh, we ended up getting the newspaper started probably within the next 30 days. Wow. And what ended up happening was one of the guys that was involved, he pretty much started stealing, like, off rip. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I had a conversation with him. I was just like, look, man, you know, I'm like, I'm a single mother raising my daughter. Like, I ain't got time for this, you know, like, hey, you know, like, do right, you know, or, you know, I'm, I'm just going to end up, you know, leaving the business or whatever the case may be. He still, you know, was with the BS. And so um, about two weeks later, you know, I ended up telling him like, hey, you know, no amount of money is worth my happiness. You know what I'm saying? And the, the business hadn't even been open long. It wasn't really making a, a lot of money. And so I ended up taking the idea and doing it in Knoxville, Tennessee, which was basically maybe about a two hour drive from Nashville. And so I ended up duplicating that and doing that in several different cities, but it, it was never anything that I was passionate about. It, it actually was something that I was a little bit embarrassed to even tell people that I was doing. Like I would never really be like, oh yeah, that's my business. You know what I'm saying? That's my newspaper. Yeah. Cause hey, I've been arrested myself. You know, I've made mistakes, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And it's just like, you know, you putting people on blast, you know, some people had actually lost their job, you know what I mean? From being in this paper. So uh, wow. Long story short, you know, I ended up moving to Atlanta maybe about three years after I had gotten this company off the ground. And um, I wasn't even making a lot of money from it. I probably was making like, I probably, you know, at this time I was about 25, 26 years old. I was probably making about $60,000 a year, you know, doing this little, this little tabloid paper. But I really didn't have to work much. I only had to work maybe like one day a week, you yeah. know. And when I moved to Atlanta... I got so enthralled in the, in the city and the culture here, I really was not paying attention to the business as much. And so the white guy that I had over the company, he eventually ended up stealing the company from me, you know, wow. up under my nose. And uh, he basically, like, he had wanted me to change the name of the newspaper to something else. And he had been the one that was going in and doing all of the work. So all of the people that were selling the paper for us, he had set the deals, you know. So it was very easy for them for him to do that. You know, they weren't seeing me. They didn't know who this little black girl was. You know, it was this yeah. older white man, you know, that was making all of the deals for me and kind of being the face of the company. And so um, when that, that happened, you know, I was very like my feelings was hurt because he was kind of like a like an uncle or something like that to me. You know, he was much older, older than me. But, you know, we would spend a lot of time together before I moved to Atlanta. And so 
at that time, that was the second time in my life that I basically, you know, had lost it all, you know, and um, at that point, you know, I, I was, I had, I had bought a house here in Atlanta that I was working on flipping. But, you know, that's one thing about real estate when you real estate is a great investment, but sometimes you can't get your money back out of it, you know, when you need it, you know, so I was waiting on the house to sell it was on the market. And, um, you know, I got to the point where I was like, eventually I started a clothing line and I was I was dating a girl that had a boutique. Me and my daughter was in the corner of the boutique selling smoothies. I mean, it was like hard not hustle yeah. for real. Yeah. And literally, like within a nick of time, I'll never forget, I was down to my last $500 in this house and I got an offer on the house. Now I was only going to make like five or $10,000 off of it, but I was going to be able to get my principal back that I had put into it. And that was the most important thing for yeah. me. So I ended up selling so the house. Go do something with exactly. It. Yeah. So I ended up selling the house and it's like, okay, now I got maybe, I probably had like 40 grand in at the time. And so, you know, I told the girl that I was dating and I was very honest with her. And uh, we had just did a party bus. Uh, we had just did a party on a party bus for Halloween. And so I told her, I said, you know, I said, I think I'm going to start. I think I'm going to start booking parties for them. I'm going to kind of go back to my roots in Nashville and get back into pro promotions and stuff. I think I'm going to start throwing parties for them. And, you know, they'll give me a cut of it. And she was just like, nah, you thinking too small. She was like, let's buy a party bus, you know? Mm. And I was just like, damn, you right. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, she, it was the first time I had ever dated anybody that had more money than me. Um, shout out, honey. <laughs> and uh, we still friends to this day. But anyways, um, she was like, she didn't want me to spend all my money. So she was like, you know, but I'm going to go. spend the block for snooping with love. <laughs> <laughs> She tried to already, <laughs> but uh, but anyways, uh, she was like, you know, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna invest half of it in 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 into it with you, so that you don't have to spend your last. Yeah. And she was like, you know, I believe in you, you know, you're gonna be good, you know, da 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 da. And that company kind of really paved the way, you know, for everything that I'm doing now. You know, I ended up making my first hundred thousand, you know, in cash, and that was one thing that. I was taught being a financial advisor, you know, all these older white guys, you know, it's just like, you know, it's, it's, it's harder to save your first $100,000. But once you do, and especially when you know how to invest, you know, you just keep multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. So anyway, I ended up saving my first 100000 with that business. And, uh, I, but I, I hated the business, you know, because like I was driving the bus, you know, yeah. at night, I was doing anything I could to get the profits that I needed, you know. And then for one year straight, I didn't buy nothing. I didn't buy a new pair of drawers, a new pair of shoes, nothing. You know, I only bought what my daughter needed. I didn't buy anything for me. I felt like a bum. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I was investing, you know, into my future. I always tell people, wow. you know, sacrifice come before success, even in the dictionary. You know what I mean? So, um, so anyways, uh, her and I, you know, we eventually broke up, you know, but I, I was able to get my first 100000 And when we broke up, I moved to... Auburn Avenue, Jesse Hill area, you know, here in Atlanta. And um, I had always told myself that I wouldn't get back into like owning lounges and stuff like that because of that experience that I had. But I had started, you know, even though I had the party, but I started like promoting parties and stuff like that. And I was just like, you know, I'm gonna give it one more try, you know. And uh, I ended up right across the street from where I was staying at the condos that I was staying at. There was a little small spot that was for lease. And uh, my homegirl, she had showed it to me. And it was like super small, it was small as hell, like smaller than this, much smaller than this living room. You know what I mean? And uh, my credit was still shot at the time because remember, I had those at, at age 22. I had those six houses, but they all yeah. ended up getting foreclosed on in 2008, all wow. of that. So my credit was terrible. And, and my motto before I knew and I knew better, my motto would be like, oh, OK, well, you know, I'm cool, you know, because, you know, as long as I got money, you know what I'm saying? I'm cool, you know. But of course, as we know, you know, you're going to spend much more. You're going to get higher APRs, higher percentage rates, you know, if your credit is messed up, you know, fix your credit so that you don't even have to use your own money. But of course, I didn't know that at the time. And so anyways, I'm going and I'm applying for this space. And I'm like, you know, look, you know, I know my credit, you know, I know I don't look good on paper, you know, but I promise, you know, and it was actually my birthday. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm putting in the lease and I'm writing this letter. I was like, you know, I promise, you know, if you just give me a chance, yep. you know, I'm going to make this place successful. And you will also have a hand in helping somebody that is going to be a very successful, influential yep. person, you know, later on down the road. And so they even ended up giving me the spot. 
And I turned that spot into the Hookah Hideaway, which became like wildly successful, you know, here in Atlanta. And that really opened up a lot of doors. You know what they're going to do in Atlanta? What's that? Smoke some hookah. Man, yeah. that was one thing that I learned when I first moved here. I was like, oh my God, these people love hookah. And yeah, I don't Margins smoke hookah. is crazy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> for sure. She for sure. She's like, for sure, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah. Mm-hmm. The hookah, that, that name, fire. Oh, we yeah. coming up with all these names. You, Snooping me. for yeah. Love, that's yeah. fire. The yeah, hookah man. hideaway. Yeah, me. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So, and then did that launch the ESCO when you went into? Yeah, so what ended up happening is. Uh, so I had the hookah hideaway. I probably had had the hookah hideaway for about two and a half years at this point. And um, it, it was, you know, very successful. And I said, you know, well, I want to duplicate this. I've always been the type of person. If I do something, I'm going to put the systems in place, get that down, and then I'm going to duplicate it. And so uh, there was a guy that had promoted a party with me. Um, he, Him and his best friend wanted me to do a spot at Macon. So I ended up opening up a spot at Macon with them called Posh Ultra Lounge. Um, now, I have a secret weapon, my spiritual advisor, which is kind of like a psychic, but not, you know, on the negative stuff. And so he had told me, don't do that. Don't do that. It's going to be terrible. Yeah, intuition. Yes. And it was terrible. <laughs> um, you know, sometimes they say, you know, three is a crowd, you know, but they were best friends. They brought me in because they didn't have the experience, but they didn't listen to anything that I told them to do. Yeah. Not coaching. And so, so exactly. People go wrong. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So I ended up asking them to buy me out of that business and that happened. And so... Um, I decided I wanted to open up something else in Atlanta. So I was going around when I first moved here. I lived in the Castleberry Hills area. And so I always wanted to come in from being from Detroit, but then kind of semi being raised in Nashville, where so many white people, you don't see a lot of black success. I was very impressed by Peter Street when I first moved here because you had places like M Bar, Slice, 255, all of these black owned bars back to back. And so I, I had dreamed of owning something on that street. So I ended up going to that street uh, with my realtor at the time, and we put in an application on something that was available, and then I went to Jamaica. And at the time, I wasn't really able to do much traveling because I was so, you know, enthralled in business and, you know, raising my daughter. So anyway, I go to Jamaica, um, ends up being a terrible trip, and on the way back from Jamaica, I end up getting stopped in customs. Mm. And they come up to me, they're like, you know, is your name? Michelle Dillard. And I'm like, yeah, you know why? You know, so they grab me, they take me to the back. And they're like, you know, did, did you know you have a warrant for your arrest in Nashville? And I said, well, no, absolutely not. You know, I haven't lived in Nashville now probably for about five years, you know. Mm-hmm. And they said, well, you know, you have a warrant for your arrest. Um, and, and come to find out what had happened was when that guy, when that happened with that newspaper company, the guy had ended up not depositing the money in the bank account. So when I wrote the last check to the printing company before I shut that company down, the check bounced. Mm. The check was for $5,033. Anything above a check for $5,000 in Nashville is a felony. Wow. So I had a warrant for a felony, not knowing it, and the warrant had been out for about five years. So they said, well, we're going to see, we're going to call them, and we're going to see if they want you, if they want us to hold you. So they called, and they said, yeah, you know, we we want you guys to hold her. We're going to come pick her up. So I ended up book, being booked into Clayton County Jail. Now, mind you, at this time, you know, I've totally gotten my life together. You know, I'm a successful, you know, owner of the Hookah Hideaway. I'm looking to open up my next spot. You know, I'm driving a Range Rover. I'm doing it. You know what I mean? And so, you know, I'm just devastated. You know, so I, I go to jail, I'm, get booked into Clayton County. And um, long story short, while I was in jail, um, I ended up talking to a I, talking to a friend of mine who had, you know, my phone. So, you know, my employees and staff, they're keeping the business open, keeping the business going. And I uh, talked to a friend of mine. I was like, you know, hey, you know, call my voicemail for me. You know, I was like feeling like really down this day. And um, I had a voicemail from the realtor who had showed me that spot on Peter Street. Mm. And so I called him. I had my friend call him on three way from jail. And this guy is so funny because when I tell this story, this was this was how he even learned that I was in jail. He never even knew until like hearing interviews that I've done. And so um, call him and he's like, hey, he was like, you know, uh, he was like, you didn't get that spot. He was like, you know, they don't want to because now by this time I look much better on paper, you know, so it wasn't me. He was like, you know, they just don't want to put another lounge there. He was like, but there's another spot that's available. He was like, it's not really right there on that block. It's a little bit further down. He was like, you know, but it's owned by a, you know, famous rapper, you know, from Atlanta. And he's actually heard of you. You know, he's heard of the Hookah Hideaway and, you know, your party bus company. And he wants to do business with you. 
And I'm like, okay, I'm I'm kind of skeptical because yeah. you know I'm just not about to do business with anybody yeah. with Especially everything with that I had last. already yeah. you know had went through. And then, you know, just because it's a famous rapper, you know, every rapper ain't smart. You know, you can't do business with just anybody. So anyway, I'm, I paused for him and I'm like, you know, who is it? And he was like, two chains. And I remember it's, it's, it's just like, like everything just like in this loud ass jail, just kind of like fell silent. And I was just like, oh, OK. I was like, I can probably do business with him. You know, I'm trying to hold my excitement yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm so, and so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so right after that. Um, I ended up walking up to my cell and I'm, I'm telling my little cellmate. Now, I, I probably have been in this jail for about two weeks now at wow. this time. And I'm like, yeah, I'm about to open up a spot with two chains. And of course, she's like, girl, sit down. You a damn lie, you know. <laughs> and so they ended up coming to get me. Nashville came to pick me up the very next day, took me back. I was extradited in like a paddy wagon, like 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 some slave shit. I'm handcuffed, yeah. my arms shackles on my legs yeah. it was crazy you know driving back with like murderers and stuff like that and so anyway they get me up there and as soon as i get up there they drop the charges wow so it's like they put me through all of that for no reason but of course thankful you know that they dropped the charges so they dropped the charges and um you know i get back to atlanta and two days later i met with two chains at the hookah hideaway crazy yeah yep and so the night before i was like so I had so much anxiety, I was nervous, and not because I was meeting him, because um, I've never been a starstruck person. You know, I feel like, you know, we all put on our, get up and put on our drawers the same, same way, way every yep. morning. And so, um, you know, I just knew that if that went well, that I had the hustle, I had the, the drive, you know, I was, I was financially together to be able to take advantage of the opportunity. I always tell people, you know, sometimes people get opportunities and they're not even ready to take advantage of mm. it, you know? <laughs> and so, Stay and I you, knew that if ready. things went well, that it would change my life, you know what I mean? And it, it definitely has, you know? So, and it's kind of the rest has been history, you know, yeah. since then. Y'all got franchises all over mm -hmm. the United States and yeah. more opening. Yep. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. fire. Mm -hmm. How did you, what made you say let's start franchising this? Or is that the same thing as earlier you said when I find said that work, I like to put a system together and duplicate it? Yeah, so I decided to start franchising for a couple of different reasons. So I've actually franchised two of my brands, my restaurant brand and my salon suite brand, mm. um, Remedy Spa and Salon Suites. I actually franchised the salon suite brand first just because um, it's an easier business model for somebody that like let's doesn't have experience. That. How you got in that? How did you get um, so I ended up getting into I ended up getting into that because I, I really I wanted some daytime money. I wanted something that was easier. You know, the restaurant game is, is super hard. You mm. know, it's, you got to pay a lot of attention to details. You have to work a lot of hours. Um, and I wanted something that would also give me financial freedom and create generational wealth. But I wanted to be able to spend more time with my daughter. And, uh, you know, when I get my hair done, you know, I'm always going somewhere to get it done. And I, I started realizing that I was starting to go into a lot of people that were doing my hair were more so in suites yeah. than in actual salons. And so that's what led me into that industry about five years ago. And so, so thankful that Where's I got into the originated it. salon suites. Atlanta? You know what? I'm not sure. Um, I actually think actually, no, I do know Dallas, Texas. They originated in Dallas, Texas. There is a brand there called sola uh sola salon suites and they were kind of like one of the first ones okay. you know to to do it back in the day that's like 10 years ago i used to come to atlanta and i never seen nothing like i didn't notice it. i used to go to uh say crap club Bang. Ramsey or something? Yeah, Ramsey. Yep. That crap oh, yeah. was oh, like man. Yeah, Atlanta. Yeah. What they yeah. say, Atlanta? Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm talking about you like, in like there. 70 sweets. <laughs> yo, you in there, they selling everything. Peach cop. This boy used to come with this <laughs> yeah. peach cob was slapping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> peach cop. And I was in there hustling t shirts. I had this Peace in Philly shirts. Mm -hmm. I made Peace in Atlanta, Marcus Harvey, all these dudes I met there like 10 mm -hmm. years. I'm in there selling, buying stuff. Yeah. I'm like, Wow. What, is, what is this place? Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. Yep. So for that's sure, crazy. for sure. But so, yeah, so that was how I discovered, you know, that industry. And the reason why I decided to franchise both of those brands is because I've always been a, a coach. You know, I've always been. So I used to do something probably, man, 10 years ago, money making Mondays, yeah. you know, where every Monday I would get on live at 8 p.m. and, you know, coach people and let people ask me questions, you know, about opening up their own business. And so, I've always been passionate about coaching people. I actually enjoy that more than just working with staff. And so 
Um, it was just like, you know, well, if I can get to the point where I can set up a passive income source for myself um, through franchising and, and end up, you know, having more and more of these locations and not have to do the hard work myself, but, you know, get people that are wanting to do it, wanting to own restaurants, wanting to own salon suites, um, it, it just made sense, yeah. you know. And so I ended up franchising both of these brands back in 2022, I believe it was. Yeah. And so... Uh, we've got four ESCO franchises, two locations that we operate now. So that's six. And actually starting September 1st, I'm, those are franchised out, you know, so that I can just focus on other things. Yeah. Um, and then re my Remedy Spine Salon Suites, I've got three locations here and five franchises. And so I probably would have had twice as many, you know, but I lost my daughter in 2022. And that, you know, definitely, you know, stopped me in my tracks. Sorry, yeah, and, you know, well, yeah. yeah, I appreciate that. But, that's you know, a tough, um, it's a tough it's tough. It is. It yeah. is. Yeah. I see you on Instagram talk about it often. I, I definitely be keeping you in my prayer. I don't I know what it feel it. like, but I know that's, that's everything. Yeah, you yeah. know, I wish I didn't. You know, I used to always hear about people like losing their kids. And I, I would always think like, damn, man, you know, I would hate to have to go through something like that, you yeah. know. But, you know, you never know what you're going to go through in life. And, um, you know, it's you know been very tough you know it's definitely changed me a lot you know as entrepreneurs we always think about who we doing it for and and what our why is and so it's it's difficult when you lose you know your yeah. why and 100%. you know when you lose the person that you know you set up all these businesses for you yeah. know 100 percent. yeah yeah so definitely continue to keep you in my prayers thanks um, Leah. with your Salon suites, man. I love the concept. It's funny. I do event spaces. So yeah. a similar yeah. aspect, right? But I love the idea that these individuals are paying me every week. Mm -hmm. Walk me through the business, man. How do I oh, get yeah, started absolutely. in this game? Why is this such... Mm -hmm. I always talk about how I believe event space is at one of the one of my favorite forms of real estate, and definitely, I'm sure definitely. Salon Suites is one of your favorite. So let's absolutely, talk through it. Walk absolutely, me through the model. absolutely. So I'm gonna give y'all a little tea, but not all of it. I do okay. have a five day coaching program mm. coming up. So y'all make sure y'all go to startmysalonsuite.com. <laughs> and you gonna give all this game? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give all this game. Startmysalonsuites.com. Listen, yep. she about to give you a little bit of sauce. <laughs> Just a little but bit. But she's saying make sure y'all go get a ticket, join her, and guest speakers you talked about. Absolutely. Make sure y'all on that. Start my salon. I'm on it because I. I really want to get one of these. So go ahead. Give me, give oh, me yeah, some yeah, of that sauce. Yeah, for sure. And it's so funny because when I first got into this industry and I put my coaching program out, the first thing that I had to do is really just teach people what a salon suite was. Yeah, 100 People really didn't even understand, Especially you know, Especially in other was. cities if you haven't. Because yep. Philly, I'm seeing them now, but that, that wasn't a thing, really. Mm -hmm, it's just mm -hmm. a barbershop. And that's the thing. It's such a un, it's still such an untapped industry, yeah, you know? I agree. But basically, so what it is, is uh, a salon suite is, um, it combines two multi-billion dollar industries. So you've got the real estate industry, and then you've got the beauty industry, mm. both multi-billion dollar industries. And the, the beauty of it, the thing that I love about it is that, one, you don't have to have any business experience. Um, you don't have to have any experience in the beauty industry. A lot of people, they're like, you know, well, Snoop, you know, I don't do hair. You know, I don't know anything about lashes. Don't worry about it. All you're basically doing is getting a space and renovating that into individual suites for beauty professionals to be able to rent out. And they pay you on a weekly basis. Mm. Pretty Essentially, you're a landlord. You know, yeah. you need to make sure that the lights stay on, that the air stays on, the place is kept clean, looking good. Um, and for the most part, you know, build it and they will come, you know, um, and they will continue to come. And, you know, you get good tenants. You know, we have a program that shows people, you know, how to set up their space um, so that, um, you know, they can keep a 92 percent occupancy rate, even in, in an economy like this, you know. Wow. Um, so it's also a recession proof business. How as many well. uh, units you recommend people start off with? So I always recommend that people start off at least with a space that's, that's at least 2,500 square feet. Okay. Um, and that should be able to get you anywhere from 15, 14 to 18 units. Yeah. Um, and so uh, it, it like I, I have a student right now. She literally just opened up about three months ago and she's already completely leased right here in Atlanta. Even in now Atlanta is probably one of the more competitive cities because, you know, here one person do something and next year, 100 people <laughs> are yeah, going to yeah. be doing it, you 100%. know. Uh, but yeah, you know, very, very lucrative. And the thing that I like about it is that it's, it's extremely passive. I never really go to my salon suites. And they're not really, you don't, 
it's not like somebody got to sit there all day, exactly. right? It's running by the people yep. in the suite. Exactly, exactly, yeah. because they're business owners. Yeah, you know, and so they're respecting it too. Exactly, yeah. exactly, and, saying, and then that's the thing about it. Everybody wants to be a business owner nowadays, yeah. you know, yeah. and so they're able to run their business at just a fraction of the cost versus having to worry about getting a whole entire salon, you know, where they have all of these um, operating costs, you know. Yeah. So we take all that away, um, and it inspires people to be able to open up their own business too. Are you recommending a uh, lease or buying? Because I'll, I'll be you know, 90% it just of most depends. of my students lease their Yeah, bill. it just depends. You know, most of mine lease as well. You know, we have a couple of people, you know, that end up buying, um, especially, you know, if you can find a really good deal, yeah. you know, then why not? Because I will tell you that probably the only headache sometimes is if you do get like a bad landlord and they're not keeping up the outside premises yeah. and, you know, or you're having a fight with them about um, repairs, you know, that are, um, you know, that, that they have to fix, you know, but outside of that, you know, for the most part, um, leasing, you know, is, is absolutely fine, you know? So, and actually I do a national salon suites conference as well. So this is the second year that I'm doing it. You break um, everything down. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And it's October 18th through the 20th. We have tons of speakers, uh, national salon suites conference.com. Um, but yeah, and it is crazy because it just truly shows how how much the the community and how much the space is growing you know because yeah. like last year we probably had maybe about 140 people you know come to the conference and this year we've already sold 200 tickets and we're still in early bird phase you yeah. know so i think i think people are on this thing of i have we're we're you being a financial planner uh being your first thing is you taught them multiply much. Like we mm -hmm. have to get mm -hmm. in that phase of doing it. So I think more and more people are starting to be like, yo, I got to make this. You, you can't save your way to wealth. No, no, not at all. That money got to be doing backflips. You will not become a millionaire just from working a nine to five and saving. You've got to find something that you can get into. Even, even if it's just as small as investing in the stock market where your money is working for you, working hard for you, you know? So, yeah. You got me really thinking about, I might got to get in the game. What What's some other things I need to look out for? Yeah, I know okay. you made some mistakes. Like yeah, you oh, talked about sure. mistakes, I'm sure. For sure. In for business, sure. it sounds like you probably lost well over a million dollars in mistakes over, over time. I would definitely say that. For Same sure. for me. Mm -hmm. What's some things I would say that when getting a salon suite, what's some things I should be looking out for? All right. So first and foremost, number one, you have to find the right location. Mm, okay. All right. So, and that's with any business, yeah. you know, you have to find the right location. So that's one of the first things that we break down is what exactly is the right location, mm. um, where you should be, how much parking you need, um, mm. because parking is extremely important. You know, you think about it, if you, let's say you've got 15 suites, so you got 15 suite owners, then plus their clients coming in, mm. you know what I mean? So um, that, um, how many square feet, you know, you actually need, you know, how, how many is too little and how many is too big, you yeah. know what I mean? So. Uh, finding that location is very key. You know what I mean? Should it be a two story location, a one story location? Should you be in a plaza? Um, so we break all of that yeah. content down. Number yeah. one, first and foremost. Um, secondly, you want to make sure that you have the right team. All mm -hmm. right. So um, you cannot do this by yourself. You need a team of individuals. OK, so you've got to have the right contractor. Um, a licensed contractor at, at that. Um, so we talk about, you know, how it is that you can find the right contractor. I've got people that, um, you know, aren't, weren't coached by me, but, you know, have just hired terrible contractors. And instead of being open in 90 days or six months, it's taking them a year to get and, open. And now you're still carrying it with carrying Exactly. Calls. You know, so you're wasting money, it's you know. not getting exactly, a coach. Exactly. <laughs> you know, exactly. Yeah. You know, so you're still paying at least, you know, just because, you know, you didn't have the education, you know, behind, you know, what you were doing. Um, but yes, yeah, so um, finding a good contractor, finding a good architect. So the architect is going to be the one that's going to draw up the floor plans for you. Yeah. Um, and that's important because, number one, when you first submit your plans to the city to get your building permit, you're not going to get a stamp of approval on the very first go. Never. I don't even think they even allowed to do that, even if there were like no mistakes. You know what this I'm saying? perfect, but I still got to give you a little bit yeah, of trouble. Yeah, they gonna, it's going to be something. And <clears throat> if you got an architect that's not good, or they're very busy or or whatever. Um, and, you know, it, it's something small, but it takes them two weeks to get back to you. Then that's delaying your project. You know, so we, we uh, also not only, you know, 
talk to you and teach you about how to find the right caliber of people, but also share our resources, you know, as well. Um, and so I have resources all throughout the country because I've got over 600 students, you know, that I've helped in various cities, states, et cetera. You know yes. what I mean? So, um, you know, another thing that we teach is, uh, and, and this is this is key, and this is probably the biggest reason why somebody would want to be coached by me, what, the reason why somebody would want to come um, to the Salon Suite Startup Challenge is because we teach you how to do this without having to use not one dime out of your own pocket. Say what? You know, yep, mm. yep, not having to use not one dime out of your own pocket. So even better. Uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. You know, is so that how business to, credit, grants? Like, what? Yeah, yep, yep. So we teach you, you know, how to, you know, of course, first, you know, getting your personal credit together. Yeah. Um, two, building your business credit. Uh, that's one question a lot of people have is, you know, exactly how do I build my business credit? Um, you know, but how to do that. Um, how to get business funding where it's very seamless, it's very easy. We have partners that we work with that once we get you to the right credit score that you need to have and your credit profile looks the way that it needs to look, then that part is simple. You know what I mean? So we help you get the business funding um, that you need so that you don't have to use, you know, uh, the utilization. You don't have OPM. to use, you know, exactly yeah, other like people's OPM. money, you know. Um, and so that, you know, it lessens the risk, you know, yeah. of using your own money. So. And of course, you know, everybody want to use somebody else's money to do something. That's a fact, Jack. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so yeah. So that's that's one of the main things that we do. Um, and then we also, you know, teach you how to. Okay. So you know, all right, Snoop. You know, I've got this perfect spot. Um, I've got my contractor. I've got my architect. I got my money now to do it. Yeah. How do I how do I break this place down? Yeah. You know. I was um, about to ask you. That yeah, you got like, some people I that are leasing complete shells. Wow. You know. So then it's like, okay, well, shoot. You know, how do I get? 16 suites out of this yeah. place, you know? So um, that's another thing that we teach you is, you know, a lot how of to set up. Like no. going back with the city in terms of getting a shell, trying to, is that? Well, the architect is pretty much going to handle they that. They're going to handle oh, yep. so they're gonna the handle that piece. do what they yep. do. Exactly, okay. exactly. But yeah, you know, we teach you how to break that space down um, and set you up for success, you know? I can't tell you how many salon suites I go into where it's just so much dead space. And I'm like, all right, you got 14 suites, but you could have had 18. Mm. Uh, and then what, four times 300 a week, you know what I mean? You're missing out on $1,200 a week times that by four, that's $4,800 a month. You know what wow. I'm saying? That's almost $60,000 a year that you're missing out on. Wow. You know, so we teach our students, you know, how to break that space down so that you can, so that you can make as much money as possible. Yeah. Then we also teach you, you know, how much, okay, then the next question, what do I need to lease my suites for? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So then that's another thing, you know, that we go into, you know, within the uh, Salon Suite Startup Challenge. Let me ask you this well, even with that and y'all before i go for, further go to start my salon suites.com yep like go there right now like stop for a second right i know snoop dropping game <laughs> but i want you to get i want you to be able to literally digest this info like i'm like i need more that's why i keep i'm getting more questions <laughs> but i know she can't give this all over this interview go to start MySalonSuites.com right now. Go lock in your ticket and in the comments below, just say, yo, I got my ticket, right? Because I want you to be a part of this with me. I want you to learn. I want you to get this game. And more importantly than it all, I don't want you to make the mistakes that she's made in business, that I made in business. If you can avoid these by making a small investment in yourself, that's something I want you to do. Yeah, I always yeah. tell people, you know, back in the day when we were first getting started, we didn't have stuff like this. Heck you know no, what I mean? you got to figure it out. There doing courses Man. and classes and you figure it all out on your own. And exactly, exactly. And, and so that's, that's why we were, we were losing money. You know, <sighs> there is no reason why somebody should start a business and not know how to do it the right way with all of this knowledge out here. Yeah, even even if you was to go try to piece it together on YouTube, like yep. there's no excuse for. I think right now is no excuse for you not to try something. Exactly. I ain't saying you got to be an entrepreneur, but that money needs to be moving. Exactly. Some way, shape, Facts. or form. Facts. You know I mean? Facts. Yeah. But yeah, so then another part to this that's so important, you know, so it's like, okay, Snoop, I found my, my building. I got my team. I got my money. I, I got my, my architectural plan, you know, where, okay, so now I got, I was going to do 14 suites, but now you showed me how to do 20 suites, okay, and then now it's Which done. Is, you just add an extra six. Exactly. Yeah. Then it's like, okay, well, what do I do now? How do I fill this thing up so that yeah. I can make some money? Yeah. 
And so that's another thing that we go into is Can how we market these, these things. things. Like pre-sell? Oh, yeah, for sure, mm. for sure. And, and that's what you want to do, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, but, yeah, so then we go into um, A to Z, you know, with, with the marketing tactics, you know, on yeah. what you need to do um, to be able to, you know, have a anywhere from an 85 to 92 percent tenant occupancy right you know wow. so that your suites are attractive um and then also we take it a step further and teach you what are the apps that you can use so that you can uh structure your business and scale your business in a way where you can pretty much run it hands for hands mm. off you know what i'm so saying like and so that's automated. the thing that's that's the key is to be able to have a passive income business that's bringing you in thousands of dollars and people pay and weekly pay or monthly there. they pay weekly that way i get my bread just okay. in case you're not good with money management exactly and you know another thing that's so sweet about this business neo that i really like especially coming from the restaurant industry I always tell people in that restaurant industry your money hits so many people's hands before it finally gets to your bank account mm. right so it's gonna go through Suppliers, the server the bartender chef, okay, yeah. okay the yeah. server the bartender, Clean the, supply. the manager, um, you got people stealing, you know, all of this stuff. With these salon suites, it's like, okay, your rent is $300 a week and that's it. And it's coming straight to me. Yeah, direct to the source. There, there's no middleman. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. so I, I I love that, you yeah, know? And I like so that. Give, give my money why, right to me. Okay. And so that's why I've duplicated, you know, this model, you know, over and over, you know, and yeah. um, have helped, you know, over 500 students, you know, open wow. up their own salon suites that's across great. the country. So you literally out here pioneering, getting people to get <laughs> yeah. their spot open. Mm -hmm. I love that. I just love the idea of just more money. Let me ask you this as we get ready to wrap up. One thing that I see from I'm outside looking in, like you're managing a lot of different. How are you managing it all? How are you keeping all these things afloat from restaurants to movies mm -hmm. to salon suites to mm -hmm. uh, things that people investments that i know i'm sure you got that yeah. people don't even know exist because you's a hustle like yeah. you're gonna go make that money flip mm -hmm. so how are you managing it all like uh, what's your day look like every day you know i one it's about balance you know i'm i'm, I'm a work hard play hard type person yeah. now. i see you do the trips i'll be yeah. looking at the yeah. gram yeah yeah, yeah. you I gotta do, do that though I, I got to i got to i do a lot of traveling that's something that i'm very passionate about uh I think, you know, one, you know, I just think I'm just born to do it. You know, I'm, I'm multitask. You know, I'm very organized. You know, I schedule everything to a T, even my extracurricular stuff. Um, I have a very good team, you know, so I have a team. And I think, you know, in business, you have to have individuals around you that you can trust. Um, and you won't know if you can trust them unless you give them a chance, you yeah. know. And so um, I have a good team. And, um, you know, but I do take that time out for myself, you know, because you will crash and burn, you know, you'll burn out, you know, you'll, you'll get tired. I'm, I'm getting older. I'll be 40 <laughs> next year. I can't go as hard as I used to, you know, when I was 26, 27, 28. Yeah. Uh, the grief has definitely taken a lot out of me, but you know, I, I feel like I'm, I'm back now. You Are you know going to I mean? therapy about it? Yeah, for okay, sure. Good. For sure. But I, I feel like I'm back now. I feel like That's I good. have a a, just like a, a, a deeper fire yeah. in my system. You know what That's I'm good. saying? I know I'm probably getting You already had door. a deeper fire. You, 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 <laughs> this is a forest fire now you got. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, uh, you a visionary or an operator? It looked like you, it sounded like you got both because normally a visionary, the person that got all this stuff, they're not organized. Right. I'm not organized. So right. you, you, I would say you I'm hold both a, hats? I'm more of a visionary. Okay. But I do, I operate for a little bit and then I give it to somebody else. Yes. That's, that's from what I take my, from what I'm seeing from you, and we got a similar, and again, that's just getting to know you, is you're a self-star. You'll go get it up, mm -hmm. and then somebody go, exactly. go take it over. Exactly. Like, go get the reality show up, go hard, get yep. it done, then somebody take, get yep. the salons up, somebody. That's, that's it. Yeah, that's I'm, it. I'm the same. I'm mm -hmm. Get it up, Pat. I'm yep. a, but that is actually, and let's talk about it, that's most people hard. The hardest thing for most people is to start. That's mm -hmm. my easiest thing to do. Me I'm too. a starter, not a finisher. My mm -hmm. team will finish it. I will start yeah. it. I think I'm pretty good at delegating. And yeah. I think as a leader that that's very important. It's critical. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, I'm, and I'm not a micromanager either. Yeah. I have to have people that, that just... Get that crap done. Exactly. Yeah, me exactly. too. A player. So one of, one of my things I do, and I try to do it every day, but... Before I look at my Instagram in the morning, because I'm addicted to social... Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I'm addicted, y'all. <laughs> but I try to delegate 30 tasks out to others. Mm. 
So if I decide to go lollygag on Instagram, mm-hmm. 30 things are getting done today mm-hmm. from, or at least they're out to somebody that, where they could yeah. put it in motion. So yeah. at the end of the week, we talk about 180, 200 things that I put off of me mm-hmm. to help me mm-hmm. get something done. Yep. Like the other day, I'm literally last night, we're redoing my intro video. I'm like, wait, I gotta go try to gather all of these videos. I put like seven, eight people in who done something with me in media. Mm-hmm. Voice note, here's what I need. And they got that done in like an hour. I, it would have mm-hmm. took me like yeah. <laughs> hours to go you know try what, to figure that out. You know, we always got to have people on our team that are better at doing things 100%. than we are not, yeah. you know? 100%. One of the things I'm about to start doing now, I got a new thing. I'm trying to get down to uh, five to 10 delegating every hour. Like, let me, I okay. throw this out. Right. <laughs> like, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get a lot off me and, yeah, and, get, and get it done. I feel you. So, I feel you, man. Uh, we're about to wrap. What's one mistake in general in business people should look out for that that you like, man? I don't even want. It's certain things I don't want people to have to go through. Anything? Uh, I think mind? you know, not having contracts, mm. um, especially you know, with partnerships. Yeah. Not fully reading yeah. contracts. 100%. I think is another big one. You know, you get a lot of people that feel like, oh, okay, I can trust it. I know what it's saying. Just sign their name to yeah. it, mm. um, and not having their attorney review the contract Mm. you know you got people that spend uh that's just like for my reality show right um the guy that i'm doing it with somebody i'm real cool with he sent me over the contract probably took him five minutes to draw it up (laughs) you know i sent it to my attorney and i paid her a thousand dollars to draw the real contract you know because i'm investing over a hundred thousand dollars into this show you know what i'm saying so it's just like why would you not spend uh one percent yeah. of what you're going to invest right. to make sure Ooh, that's you know, that the intellectual property um, is still yours and to make sure that everything goes you know, the way that it needs to go. You know? I like and I, 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 I've seen a lot of people make that mistake in business. Yeah, that's good. Mm, mm-hmm. I love it. So thank you so much for coming on here, sharing your story. I can't wait to see that movie. I'm going to be getting my popcorn <laughs> watching it. I really think you still do the documentary, but I think that's a movie. That, yeah, I agree, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. You got your dad in there when he was yeah. lit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You got having the baby at 14. I mean, it's a lot of elements. You got yeah, losing it, it all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I think that'll yeah. keep. that. That's like a pursuit of happiness type yeah, story. It is. It yeah, is. So it is. Let everybody know how they could connect with you. Absolutely. Um, so uh, first and foremost, you guys can follow me on Instagram at who is Snoop. Just like Neo said, he addicted to social media. So am I. But in a business way, you can come follow me and make some money, you know, the same facts. way as with him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Instagram at who is Snoop. Uh, as well as, you know, my website has a lot of my personal, my, my story, um, everything that I do, all of my programs, my mentorship, um, my courses. I just started a life insurance company. So all that stuff you can find at whoissnoop.com, um, my life insurance company, information on that, as well as, uh, you know, how to be able to be an agent. You know, up under me is foreverfamilylifeco.com. And uh, once again, guys, you know, please join me September 23rd through the 27th uh, for the Salon, Salon Suite Startup Challenge. And you can get a ticket at startmysalonsuite.com. And go get it right now. And they told me if, if you see this before, they said go to snoopsmasterclass.com. You got a yes, class they yes, can watch yes. too. So, so, so also, um, you know, on Wednesdays uh, up until the 23rd, I'll be doing a free masterclass. You can go to snoopsmasterclass.com and that will give you guys, you know, just even more information on this phenomenal industry. Don't, 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 don't miss it, y'all. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Y'all, y'all have an amazing day.